Okay, so now we will uh, prove a very important theorem which says that kernel of a homomorphism phi is always a subgroup of a group G. Okay, so here we will assume that phi is a homomorphism from the group G to G dash and where G is having the operation star and G dash is having the operation star dash and we will prove that this kernel of phi we all know that kernel of phi is a subset of the group g because uh, the definition of kernel of phi is such that is what it is collection of all x in g such that phi of x is equal to how much phi of x is equal to e dash okay so clearly by this definition kernel of phi is a subset of a group g because all the elements x are are collected from the set g so kernel phi is a subset of G. Now we want to show that this kernel of phi is a subgroup of the group G. So let us take two elements from kernel of phi. So we will prove that kernel of phi is a subgroup of G using the subgroup criteria. So let us take two elements in the kernel of phi. So let A and B belong to kernel of phi. As soon as I say that A and B belong to kernel of phi, it clearly means that phi of A means the image of A will be E dash and what will be phi of B? Phi of B is also equal to E dash because that is the definition of kernel. If an element belongs to the kernel, then its image must be how much? Its image must be E dash. So phi of A and phi of B both are E dash. Where are A and B? A and B are in kernel of phi. What I have to show that by using the subgroup criteria, I have to show that A star B inverse also belongs to what also belongs to kernel of phi so if i show that a star b inverse is belonging to the kernel of phi this means that kernel of phi will become a subgroup of g by the subgroup criteria okay so how will i show that a star b inverse is belonging to kernel of phi if you want to show some element belongs to the kernel you have to show that its image is equal to identity dash right so i have to show that if i want to show that a star b inverse belongs to kernel of b phi it means i have to show that phi of a star b inverse is equal to how much it is equal to e dash automatically once the image of a star b inverse becomes identity dash it will mean that a star b inverse is an element of the set curve phi right now how will i show this so if I start with the left hand side, what will happen? And I will try to get E dash on the right hand side. So when I start with the left hand side, if I say phi of A star B inverse is equal to how much? Now we all know that phi is what? Phi is a homomorphism. Once phi is a homomorphism, we can use the definition of a homomorphism. What is phi of A star B inverse? It is equal to phi of A star dash phi of the second element who is the second element the second element is b inverse right so this is definition of homomorphism which is equal to phi of a star dash phi of b inverse but phi is a homomorphism and we know that the property of homomorphism says that phi of x inverse is always equal to phi x the whole inverse so this can be replaced by what? This can be replaced by phi b, the whole inverse. This is the property of a homomorphism which is discussed earlier. And what is phi of a? Phi of a is e dash because a belongs to the kernel. Star dash. What is phi of b? Phi of b is also e dash because b also belongs to the kernel and its inverse. What is the inverse of identity? The inverse of identity e dash is nothing but e dash itself so this e dash inverse will again become what will again become e dash and therefore you will get the product e dash star e dash will be equal to e dash again and therefore this will be our what this will be our right hand side so what we have proved from the above part is that phi of a star b inverse is equal to how much is equal to e dash and the meaning of this 
is nothing but a star b inverse this person must belong to the set kernel of phi where a and b both were in kernel so therefore now if a and b are in kernel we have proved that a star b inverse is in kernel this means that by subgroup criteria i can now say that kernel of phi is a subgroup of g okay so now we will solve this problem we will take phi to be a homomorphism from z plus to z12 and uh, we are going to find the kernel of phi in this problem if i know that phi of 1 is equal to 3 bar so let me write it find kernel phi So clearly, we know that phi of one is equal to how much? Phi of one is three bar, and therefore, if I try to find what is phi of two, I know that phi of two can be written as phi of one plus one, which is phi of one plus phi of one, and which is three bar plus three bar, and that is equal to six bar in Z twelve. And what is phi of three? In similar fashion, phi of three will be three bar plus three bar plus three bar. Which will be nine bar in Z12, and then I understand that phi of four will be three bar plus three bar plus three bar plus three bar four times, and that will be twelve bar congruent to twelve bar, and which is congruent to zero bar. So I understand that phi of four is actually coming to be zero bar, right? And therefore now I can declare that four belongs to the set kernel of phi. Okay, this is one of the very important observations that I can make. Now, as soon as I get four belongs to kernel of phi, we all know the property that phi of a inverse is equal to phi of a the whole inverse. Okay, and therefore, what can I say is that phi of four inverse is equal to phi of four the whole inverse. And what is phi of four inverse in integers? Four inverse is minus four, and this is phi of four is zero because phi belongs. To Because four belongs to the kernel, so zero bar inverse and zero bar inverse is zero bar. So I understand that minus four also belongs to the set kernel phi. Not only this, we all know that phi of zero is always equal to zero bar because phi of identity always is equal to identity dash. So this means that zero also belongs to the set kernel phi. So we have three elements in the kernel phi now. the three elements in the kernel phi if i if i write the kernel of phi i can now list the elements in the kernel of phi first zero will always belong to the kernel we have also found that four also belongs to the kernel because phi of four is zero bar and phi of minus four is also zero bar and now we have to find the other elements that belong to the kernel of phi now we have just proved in the above theorem in the above theorem we have proved that kernel of the kernel of uh, homomorphism kernel of phi is always a subgroup of the group g right here in our problem the group g is z right so kernel of phi will become what kernel of phi is a subgroup of z and we all know that subgroups of z are of the type nz right these are all the subgroups of 2z 3z 4z 5z all are subgroups of z now out of these subgroups which subgroup is this kernel of phi so kernel of phi is also some n times z so what is the value of n looking at this kernel of phi we know that 4 belongs to z minus 4 belongs to z so this is a clear indication that kernel of phi in our problem is nothing but what 4z because we all know that 4z is a subgroup of z kernel of phi is also a subgroup of z kernel contains 4 minus 4 kernel does not contain 2 so it cannot be 2z because phi of 2 is equal to how much 6 bar so kernel does not contain 2 so kernel cannot be 2z but the but here the kernel has to be equal to how much kernel has to be equal to 4z okay